Joining us now is Maryland Senator Chris Van Hollen. Senator, welcome back to Capital Review. Thank you so much for being here during such a chaotic week for you. So Senator Mitch McConnell and Senate Republicans are saying, look, Democrats control both chambers. They can take unilateral action and just go for it. Raise a debt ceiling and finance a spending bill without GOP support. Now to everyone else, it's like, fine, why not? But how does that come off to you and other Senate Democrats? Why is it important to have Republicans on board? Well, it's great to be with you. Uh, first of all, we will prevent a government shutdown. Republicans are refusing to help pay our national debt. Uh, you have to lift the debt ceiling. This is to pay the bills that are already due and owing. And the issue in the Senate is that while Democrats have 51 votes, you need 60 votes to overcome a filibuster. So Republicans are able to block anything they want uh, unless it falls into an exception and raising the debt ceiling does not. And in fact, we have told Senator McConnell that we, the Democrats, will do the right thing for the country on our own. Just don't prevent us from having a vote. Um, that happened just the other day. We would pass uh, a debt ceiling with 51 votes, all the Democrats uh, plus the vice president. Uh, just give consent because you need consent in the Senate to avoid the blocking. And Mitch McConnell, having said that he wants you know Democrats to do this on his own, blocked procedurally our ability to have that vote. So we are headed toward a roaring waterfall when it comes to the debt ceiling because as Mitch McConnell himself has acknowledged um, if you default, if the country defaults, that has a terrible impact on our economy and households throughout the country. And following that, Senator, regardless if you're a Republican or a Democrat, hundreds of thousands of people will be affected if an agreement isn't reached on raising the debt ceiling. So let's say the Treasury runs out of cash next month. What will this mean for Americans, especially seniors and military members who rely on the government for their Social Security checks and paychecks? Well, it puts all of that in jeopardy because the government uh, will only be able to, you know, sort of, it, it won't have the capacity to pay all those bills on time. Uh, so the 65 million uh, seniors on Social Security and those who are disabled are at risk uh, of losing those uh, payments. Um, folks in our military are at risk of missing uh, their salary uh, payments. So this is a, a real disaster for the country. It will also mean higher interest rates uh, for households around the country. Uh, and Moody's Analytics, which is a nonpartisan entity, uh, has estimated that uh, unemployment will soar, it will surge, uh, and that uh, you know six million people will lose their jobs. And you'll see $15 trillion in household wealth wiped out. The United States has never defaulted on our debt. Um, unfortunately, we have, we have seen government shutdowns before, um, and those are bad enough. But defaulting on our debt uh, is catastrophic, which is why nobody, nobody, regardless of party, should be playing around with this. And by many accounts, the point of contention for all of this near collapse of our government is because Republicans are opposed to the three and a half trillion dollar infrastructure package. Now, on top of that, there's even division within the Democratic Party about it. On one end, you have West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. On the other, you have progressive Democrats. But what's your voice of reason on it? Well, first, it's important to separate out two issues. One, raising the debt ceiling is to pay the bills that are already due and owing. These are to pay bills on things that Republicans have also previously voted for. So, for example, in December, uh, we had another uh, rescue plan uh, to help small businesses, to help families in need uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, that passed with like 96 out of 100 votes in the Senate. So we have to pay the bills uh, on, on those initiatives. Uh, Republicans voted for the initiatives but now they're saying they won't pay for the bills. So that is one set of issues. Then there's the separate matter of the president's Build Back Better plan, which includes a bipartisan infrastructure bill, which I strongly support and the Senate has passed. 
but also has other very important measures, reducing the costs of prescription drugs, reducing the costs of childcare, making quality childcare more available, tackling climate change by investing in a clean energy economy. So this is part of the other part of the president's plan, and the plan is to pay for it. We've identified ways that we're going to do that through tax reform, by closing some of the big loopholes that allow multinational corporations to park their park profits overseas in places like the Cayman Islands, uh, loopholes that allow billionaires uh, to pay no annual income taxes in, in some years, and closing loopholes that allow that, that have, have some people have used, exploited to actually cheat on their taxes uh, and not pay bills, uh, taxes that are due and owing. So um, we, we intend to pay for the, this uh, initiative uh, through important tax reform. And after the break, we'll continue our conversation with Senator Van Hollen and find out what happens when the stopgap measure ends on December 3rd. You're watching Capitol Review.